Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands-On SAP Dev with QMacro. This is episode nine, the 10th episode, where we will be um, looking at building out, continuing to build out our little data retrieval script for CDS. Welcome one and all. It's great to see uh, some folks here on the stream already. Thanks for joining. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I've uh, I've already uh, spotted uh, Napit, of course, and Pierre, and Fabian, and hi, Chris. Hi, Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie's traveling, I think. Um, so that's great to, for you to join us on your on your homewards bound trip. Maybe I don't know. Um, great. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, uh, is everything? I've just I've just resized the window of this OBS streaming software. And I think it's still okay. We're still streaming. Uh, I guess you can hear me as well. That's great. So let's get going. Actually, just before we start, I did notice um, in VS Code, I've not actually hit the button yet. I did notice in VS Code that uh, the VS Code extension for CDS has, has an update. So we'll have a brief look at that. We'll install it here together. Um, not super exciting, especially now we know what's sort of inside the, the code extension. We maybe have a look to see what's changed inside of there a little bit later. Um, hey, Flavio. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so how's everybody doing today? Um, I'm feeling quite tired, actually. I've, I've just had a coffee in the afternoon, which uh, shows how desperate I am. Had quite a long day yesterday, and I didn't really sleep very well. So I apologize in advance if, uh, if my brain is working even slower than usual. Um, Pretty horrible weather here. So uh, let's get going. I will um, move over to the main scene. Uh, oh, I'm hooked up to uh, Ronnie's Bluetooth in his car. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody in Oslo. Welcome. Um, I'm, I, I guess I guess you're in Oslo. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, Inside Track Oslo is happening on the 17th of August. If you haven't uh, already started to take a look at the call for papers, call for sessions, Go to uh, Ronnie's um, blog post and uh, submit something and go. Uh, there's also SAP Inside Track uh, Frankfurt uh, coming up this month on the 23rd on Saturday uh, in Frankfurt, of course. And there's Inside Track Maidenhead, SAP Inside Track Maidenhead, which is happening in a couple of weeks' time on Friday the 15th. Is it a couple of weeks? A oh, week and a half's time. Friday the 15th in Maidenhead, just west of London. So uh, yeah, hope to see you there. Okay, so um, I did notice that in VS Code, uh, there's an update. And I just went here very quickly just before I started, just to check, yes, and as we can see here, um, can we see that? Yeah, as we can see here, um, the CDS language support Visual Studio Code has been updated to version 1.1.1. Actually, let's download that um, just in case we get the chance to unpack it later and see what's inside it. I think I remember the versions uh, of the uh, CDS LSP and the CDS compiler that were in there. So it'd be nice to see what versions we get now. It's like sort of Christmas. Um, okay, um, one thing I wanted to point out was um, uh, the, this is by the way, the, the, the bit.ly link that I'm using everywhere now for the hands-on SAP dev uh, episode blog post, a sort of central blog post where I maintain things and keep things up to date. So it's bit.ly, hands-on SAP dev, um, and that will just redirect to this blog post here. And in, if you if you go down to the catch the replay section, this is this is a, you know, a, a hash path here, let's just get rid of that. Um, you'll see that I've added, I've started adding the annotations, links to the annotation blog posts, which I'll explain uh, shortly. Uh, hey, Srikanth, uh, welcome. I'm glad you managed to join. That's great. Um, and so what we're doing is the recordings of these live streams are automatically and immediately available on Twitch, but we're also moving those across or copying those across to YouTube as well. We have the SAP Developers YouTube channel, which is here. Um, so if you're not already subscribed to the SAP Developers YouTube channel, subscribe and uh therefore get updates and so on. And as you can see here, we've got a playlist. It's actually sort of highlighted here on the channel's homepage, but uh, there's a number of playlists. 
Uh, one of which is this um, hands-on SAP dev. Uh, it's got two videos in there so far, two recordings from episode the episode zero recording and the episode one recording. And if we have a look back to um, the hands-on SAP dev blog post, you'll see in this table here, you can watch the replay on uh, Twitch. That was the link we had before. And you can now also watch the replay on YouTube. That's just a link to the YouTube video itself. However, you can also look at the annotated links blog post is one for each episode. I'm building these up as we go along. Um, I've got a number of them uh, in draft mode ready to publish um, as the videos go up on YouTube. Um, but let's have a look at this one, for example. You can click on the link. Um, have a look, uh, each of these are blog posts. There's a little screenshot of the video, why not? Um, and then go down here and if you were looking for something in particular or you try to remember, oh yeah, something happened on this video uh, on, on the live stream and it was about this, you can maybe do a search text-wise in the blog post and go, ah oh, yeah, it was Goyo that uh, that we were talking about. So there's, that you know, search for Goyo, find that and jump, click on the, the link which will take you to the video um, straight to the time, so 16 um, minutes and th uh, 18 seconds or whatever it was, and there you can see it's Goyo. So hopefully that's useful for you. Um, yeah, any questions on that? Otherwise, we'll get going. Um, so let's bring up where, let's have a look at where we were last time. Remember we were doing the, we had this sort of north breeze, this mini uh, north wind uh, model that we're building. And um, Let's make that a little bit bigger. What we started to do, well, we yeah, what we did was we, um, let's go into the folder. Where is it? North Breeze. And um, we defined uh, our simple model or the, the start of our model where we have products, suppliers, and categories. And we also created a very simple service, which was just like reflecting those three entities uh, in the service called Breezy. And that was more or less it. And then we sort of uh, paused there for a little detour to go and grab the data from the original Northwind service. Um, I know that there's uh, there are already CSV files with the Northwind data in there, but that's no fun just grabbing those. So um, what we're doing is we're building a little script and thereby also exploring different ways to uh, make HTTP requests in uh, JavaScript, in Node.js JavaScript. Um, and along the way as well, because we've chosen Axios as the library, we're, uh, we're exploring sort of how, how to work with promises, um, only in a very simple way. And also because of the way that Axios allows us to uh, write code, we're exploring what it feels like to, to do some sort of dot chainy um, uh, sequence of function calls. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue with that. Let's let's actually let's go there. And where was it? Uh, yeah, it's in grab. Okay. In fact, let's um, open up a Tmux session and um, have a look at it. So we we we've got here. Well, let's just have a look. We we've installed um, just Nodemon at the moment, and um, in our data directory. We've got these uh, downloaded JSON files called categories-0 and uh, products-0, products-20, 40, 60, 80, uh, and supplier-0. And these reflect, let me open up a um, browser window, uh, north wind products. Uh, there we go. So as you can see, if you remember from last time, um, we can grab the data in JSON form, which we want to do. Um, and where there's you know a large number of entities, what happens is that um, at the bottom there's a next link. Can you see that behind the little uh, keycaster? I'll move the keycaster slightly to the right there. Uh, hey, howdy, Robert? Do you know? Um, uh, you can see there's a skip token to say, well, I want to skip the first twenty and get to the next twenty. It's almost like a paging mechanism. And so we worked out that you know we can use the skip token to get you know the first twenty then the next 20 and the next 20 and so on until you know until there's no more, right? Um, and so that one there uh, goes down and there's no further skip token. So we, we sort of started to look at that also in order not to hammer the uh, services.odata.org 
service itself and maybe you know get IP banned or something. Um, I've, I've taken that. That's why I've got a copy of this data in in these files here: product zero, which is a skip token zero; product twenty, which is a skip token of twenty, and so on. Okay, so that's that's what it is. Um, okay, so let's go um, and have a look to see what our um, uh, where are we? Our file looked like where we left off. Okay, we'd. Okay, so let's let's, let's go through it, um, and then we can start to add to it. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm just going to move this, pop out this chat window, so I can sort of see it a little better. Uh, let's move that over there. And yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Let's move that there. Okay. Um, Okay, perfect. I got a nice large chat window. Hello, there we go. Yes, and it's still working. Perfect. Um, so let's see. We've got here uh, the uh, a set of constants, and I quite sort of like this pattern for myself. I quite like this pattern of defining as many things as we can as constants. You know, a nice sort of uh, uh, a nice way to restrict ourselves in terms of mutations, of course. Although there are sort of you know caveats there when you start to define. Um, you know, uh, t t when you allocate a, a map or uh, an array to a variable, you can still change the stuff that's inside that thing. But anyway, that's another that's another story um, to a constant rather. Uh, so we got we decided we had this sort of entities map here that described each of the three particular entities that we wanted to grab, and we also specified the number of tokens we need to actually go and pay through and grab them all. Okay, um, uh, we've got we're using Axios as a uh, an HTTP client library. And also we're gonna be writing files as well. So we're using the, the standard FS module, which is sort of built into Node. We don't have to sort of NPM install that. Uh, oh, by the way, Srikanth, um, that, that little conversation we had on uh, Twitter just before, I take it that you got that, um, those uh, modules, sorry, those packages in your project um, upgraded, let me know if you did. Uh, I, I guess that I guess that was okay. Um, yeah, I think what you were doing before was uh, upgrading the global versions of the packages that you maybe previously installed as well with a minus G. Um, there's the commented out uh, real URL um, from services.odata.org. And um, we've got, uh, ah, okay, great. Thanks for confirmation. Um, work, without, work like a charm without minus G, yeah. Uh, global, not local. Perfect. Uh, and there's our base URL. So we were using the Python um, uh, HTTP serve package, server package to just serve up some files in a, in a directory. So actually, why don't we why don't we start that up right now? By the way, um, I was talking to Ronnie on on uh, Twitter and you know various other people about keyboards and everything. I've just mapped uh, caps lock to be on my Mac OS to be control as well as the control key as well. Um, so I'm going to. My fingers are cold as well. It's very cold in this room. Uh, so I might have some even more typos than usual. But I'm going to use the caps lock, control A and a pipe. Um, and I'll, I'll also move those two around there. Uh, and I'll go into the data directory and start up, uh, there we go, the HTTP server. So that should now allow us to um, request, let's just do this here, just make sure it works. Um, oh, in fact, I can write a sort of alt there and request that. That'll bring up a, an error, of course, because it's, it's not the entire thing, but product zero, for example. Um, product zero, uh, product zero, zero dot JSON. Oh, no, sorry. There we go. Product zero. There we go. Okay. So it's it's downloading because, of course, uh, the simple HTTP server can't tell what um, content type it should be, so it doesn't send a content type. So the browser goes, oh, I'll just download it. Otherwise, it'd be JSON. But we know that's working now. That's great. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, we don't need that either. Okay, so that's great. So we're, we're, we're serving the stuff from here. And we've got our little um, range function um, just here that uh, we played around with last time where this is like the equivalent of the range function in uh, Python. Um, it's the equivalent of the range function in Python 2 uh, because it's not lazy. It will evaluate everything there and then. Um, so we can say range brackets uh, 10 and it'll go and it will produce an array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can use that to sort of, um, you know, in our, in our sort of functional dot chainy uh, programming style. Then we define, let's hope I have another different, a, a, a different a space here. Then we define this, this grab function. 
that takes an entity and then uses Axios. Uh, in fact, let's just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'll make this a, the whole thing a little bit smaller. There we go. Uh, I guess that's still okay um, uh, size-wise. And this grab function um, used the range function to generate a number of um, get requests to the base URL, which of course is this thing here, um, with the skip token, with the skip token of where x equals zero, then it's the skip token is zero times 20, which is zero, then 20, then 40, then six, et cetera, right? Uh, and then what we were doing, we were sort of flattening with this reduce function, we were flattening the data that was returned from each of the responses into a single lump. So of course we're paging through and each time we get an array of in products, for example, we want a single array of all those products. So that was what that was doing. And then we used the keys of the entities, which is the keys in lines in this on the screen here, lines 15 through 13, products, suppliers, and categories. And we went through those and called grab. And when we got the data back, we sort of stringified that, that data and um, then wrote it to a file. But actually what we'll do, just to, just to make sure everything's still working and remind ourselves and just check things, um, let's, in fact, first of all, let's tidy that up. I don't know why I put it on separate lines. Um, there we go, that's a bit better. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll have uh, a console, uh, sorry, then console.log. What do we do? Okay, cool. And what we were also using uh, was this node model, which was used before actually. So let's just go across to here. Let's open up another terminal window or pane rather in Tmux. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. We don't need to see uh, a great detail of the HTTP server output. Um, there we go, it's still in my history, Nodemon. Uh, within the node, so we've only installed it locally. So it's in the node modules directory in Nodemon bin. Um, and we also rem remember from last time we need to in ignore the data directory because obviously when files are written there, that is uh, interpreted as a change by Nodemon by default and therefore it'll rerun it, just run forever. Okay, so let's run that. Um, and there we go, we get some outputs. Okay, so let's, uh, what I'd like to do uh, is instead of, well, actually we can stringify anything really. Um, uh, uh, we we're getting a, uh, an array here, aren't we, from this sort of reduce thing. So let's just see how many entities are in each, uh, how, how many uh, items are in each entity. Um, if you remember rightly, if we look here, um, dollar count, uh, oh, there we go, products, dollar count, there's 77, okay? So we should be expecting 77 products and uh, categories, uh, eight categories and uh, suppliers, 29 suppliers. Okay, so that's good. So let's just have a d double check. Um, and we get, ooh, interesting. We get 40, 77 and 40. Um, I did have a quick look at this before and I think I figured out what it was. Um, very, very briefly, just while we were starting up. Um, the, uh, the 77 seems okay, but of course, the first thing is that um, uh, we, well, um, we've got products okay, 77, but notice that um, we've hard coded this, haven't we? Products dash. So of course it's only ever gonna get products. And if, in fact, if we have a look at this here, um, let's just make this a little bit small. Oops, oops. We can see all it's getting is products, okay? So it's not getting any of these suppliers or categories because of course it's hard-coded base URL. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, while we've got eight categories and 29, um, 29 suppliers, why have we got 40 of each of those? And that's also because, I don't know why we did this, but, um, well, actually, let's just let's just uh, let's go through this together. Oh, I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Um, let's let's factor out or refactor 
this thing here, which is the uh, get it, generating or creating each of the eight individual HTTP requests. So rather than build it from the base URL here, um, let's first of all tokenize this. So let's just check, say um, entity dash token. That's what it's going to look like, isn't it? It's entity dash token. And um, in fact, so we can then replace the word entity with the entity and then with the token with zero and 20 and 40 and so on. Um, but also I've just noticed that um, there's only 77 products and there's products dash 80 over here. And that tells me that for some reason, I don't know why we added the plus one here. We don't want that. So um, that looks a little bit better. Well, it doesn't look better because of course it's an error because we can't get this URL, but it's definitely just four calls. So zero times 20, one times 20, two twi times 20, three times 20. Uh, and that should take us up to, and four times 20 is 80. So it's beyond 77. Are you still with me? Um, yeah, okay. So um, what we'll do though, is we'll say, instead of having this base URL, we'll say um, build URL is a function that takes an entity name and you know the nth token, what, what n is token wise. And all it does is return um, base URL well, actually, that's that's a mm, yeah. No, what we'll do is we'll move that um, there because if we're referring to base URL, that's you know we, we can't call this function pure because it, it refers to something outside of itself, um, and 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 we, we don't want to do that. So let's have this string here. One of the really nice things about um, uh, the thing I want to use, we want to we want to basically use the replace function in JavaScript. If we look at node and go and say, um, you know, uh, a equals hello token there, a dot replace um, token with banana, that will give us hello banana there. But the beautiful thing is, a is untouched. A is not mutated. So the replace function is very well behaved from a functional programming perspective in JavaScript. So we can use that to our advantage in that we can chain multiple replaces one after the other, for example. Um, so let's just uh, remove that and go back and say, well, well, in fact, let's have this on a separate line here. Um, replace entity with entity and replace uh, token with n times 20. Does that look okay? Ooh, ooh dear. What's going on? Uh, replace, re oh, yeah, of course, we're not calling, um, we need to call build URL. Okay, so we created the function. Um, so let's actually use that now. So in here, we want to go into here and say, um, axios.get um, build URL uh, entity comma X there 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 that's it I think that's right let's, let's have a go uh, there we go yes I think that's worked yes yeah, so we've got 77 products 29 suppliers and eight categories. Um, let's just open up this a little bit, just so it's a little bit more readable. Um, actually, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it on one line. That, that'll do for now. So, when we get to actually call the real service, we can just, of course, replace this string here with this string here. And Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Let's just have a little bit of white space in there. Yeah, I quite like that. Um, so that's that's one thing. Um, Let's have a play around next because what we want to do is start to think about producing um, CSV. So uh, I had a quick look and there's a really nice looking module called JSON to CSV. Let me just open up. I wish I figured out why the window, the new window opens up in the wrong, quote unquote, wrong display. But anyway, um, JSON to CSV. There we go. This is it. Um, JSON to CSV converts JSON into CSV with column titles and proper line endings. Now, I had a quick look on the repo, 
This is like just a summary of the features and sort of how to use it. Um, but actually, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. oh yeah, here we go. Um, there's an example, yeah, an example I saw, which is gonna come in very useful for us. So we'll, we'll come back to that shortly. So we'll install JSON to CSV uh, and start using it. But so what we wanna do is actually write out, not um, JSON, but we wanna write out CSV. Now, uh, let's play around with this just with the uh, categories for now. So let's just only do uh, the categories. And one, one way I could do this is by saying um, filter. So these are the, the uh, object.keys of entities will produce a list, an array, product, suppliers, categories. So really, we want to just, if we just want categories, we can say x equals categories. Okay, so if that works, um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there we go. So all we get is eight. So this is just doing the categories, right? Um, so then we can start something, having a look at what that is. So let's remove that and have a look. Now we've got a ton of stuff there. And if I remember rightly, let's just, um, uh, yeah, also we can scroll up here. This is a huge amount of rubbish. Let's page up actually. Oh, there we go. There we go. Category ID seven, category name, produce, description, dried fruit and bean curd, picture. So that's like a, I don't know what exactly it is. I think it looks like a base 64 encoded or some sort of encoded graphic. Um, what I'll do, because I, I really don't like that and it may cause us some issues down the line that we don't want to deal with right now. I want to omit the picture property from our CSV. Um, in fact, if I um, if I remember like, rightly, uh, if we look in the um, where was it uh, in North Breeze, I don't even think. Yeah, I don't even think we defined a field for, no, we didn't for the picture. So all we've got is the ID, name, description, and products. Okay, so um, we want data for those fields. And notice as well that the field names that we've defined here, the, the property names, the element names, what's the right word for this? Element, property, I like the word property. The property names, um, ID, name, description, and products, well, products is an association anyway, ID, name, and description. Um, oops. There, those are not the same as the property names in the actual JSON. That's category ID, category name, and description. Okay, and that description with a capital D, for example. So we need to convert those things as well as we move to, to, to create our CSV header so that the the names of the of the fields in the CSV file match the names of the properties in the entity definition in our CDS definition in our in our model.cds. So, what do we want to do? Um, well, I think we should install um, JSON to CSV next. Yeah, why not? Um, so let's let's quit out of here. Let's go across to here. And uh, any questions, by the way, uh, is, this, is this okay? Oh, by the way, um, yeah. No, actually what we'll do first is, um, I know, I, I think I did see Chris, Chris, Chris Whaley, are you in, I think I did see you uh, join. Chris, give us a wave or give us a shout in the messages if you're there. I'm not sure whether you, on Twitch, can you can you see the participants? I guess you can somehow. But anyway, Chris. Oh, ah, morning, morning, morning. Yes, morning, Chris. Um, so Chris is going to be on our live stream on Friday. I've not announced it yet, but Chris, uh, superstar programmer extraordinaire, with the emphasis on the word extraordinaire or translated odd. No, Chris is a great a great friend of mine, and um, he's going to come on, and we're going to do some sort of functional programming in the context of a really interesting um, cap-based um, model, Shh, sorry, yes, uh, cap-based um, project that he's been working on that's uh, that he's got on GitHub. Um, so we're gonna have a look at that and uh, learn from Chris 
some really nice um, uh, functional programming techniques as well. Uh, I really admire Chris's programming style, even though I make fun of it sometimes to Chris directly, but you know, I really admire it. It's fantastic and I learn a lot from it. Um, one of the things that um, suddenly occurred to me um, just earlier was, um, when we wrote this, it was, this is a little bit ugly and it's sort of very sort of hard coded. So let's whet our appetite for Friday by doing something a little bit different. Um, I want to be able to sort of say something like filter only categories, right? Which is a lot easier to read and um, really sort of speaks to, once we sort of start working backwards, speaks to the sort of the, the small pieces loosely joined compositional um, properties of or, or aspects of functional programming. So I'm going to go up here and define um, a function. I'm going to define a function called is. I mean, I think you could define it called equal. We could, we could define, I could define the function called equals, but let's call it is for now. And is is a function that takes um, a value and, well, actually, let's define it sort of step by step. It's a function that takes a, a value and something and returns whether those two things are the same. I mean, it's a pretty weird function to define here. Why would you want this? Well, first of all, um, in fact, let's just save that, make sure everything still runs. Are we still, oh yeah, we need to go across here and get out of here. Uh, yeah, okay, filter only characters. I'm not, I've not made the change yet. So let's just, let's just remove that for a second um, and save it. Okay, there we go. And let's just actually add the, uh, There we go, that'll do. Um, just so we can see it's still running. Um, okay, fine. So that's all well and good. So we could say filter um, is categories, um, oh, sorry, it filter x is categories. I'm using the arrow keys. DJ, what are you doing? I am tired. Like that, okay, just to make sure. There we go. And so that's no better really than what we had before. However, we're sort of on the way now to think a little bit more about sort of uh, compositional functions and so on. So let's go back up here and think, well, this is a, this is a function that takes two values. Um, but what if we could make it so that it took one value that therefore we could define a function called only categories with it and specify categories that was almost like a hard coded parameter to it. And it would still be waiting for the next parameter, the X each time to value it. So let's do that. In fact, all we I'll, I'll keep that there for now. And we'll declare it again is takes a value, but instead of taking a second value, what it does is produce a function. Okay. That is waiting for another value. And then we can say x equals val. Okay, so let's have that. Let's just leave that there for now, just for um, reference. And um, well, we know that that uh, is category is, is that working? Uh, x equals val is equals val takes a val uh, is waiting for the oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, so what we want to do now is because of course that's not working at the moment because we want to say only categories which is where we want to go only categories equals is is categories there we go so we can we can yeah triple equals yes uh yeah we could use triple yeah all right let's let's go let's go for triple equals that's nice um oops Sorry, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, 16, um, triple equals there. there we go. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Yes, let's get rid of that one there. So what we've done is we define a function that takes a value and returns a function that takes a value that checks if those two things are the same. Okay, so that's a little bit of a taste. It's a slightly contrived or, yeah, you know, fairly contrived, but it gives us a taste of, things to come on Friday. Uh, I think let's just leave it like that. Because But now we're using that is function as a building block to build another function, only categories. And only categories is a function because of course we're calling the is function 
with a value, categories, and that returns a function that has categories um, uh, closed over in a closure context that's waiting for another value. And of course, that's beautiful because if we've got a function waiting for a single value, you can so easily and so naturally use it in any of the um, array-like um, functions that you get with JavaScript, like .keys, .map, .filter, .reduce, and so on, okay? Um, so anyways, that's what I can say, .keys of entities, .filter, only categories, dot for each, blah, 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 blah. Okay, anyway, where were we? Yes, um, we're gonna install uh, JSON to, so yeah, make sure you tune in on Friday uh, for the regular stream. Uh, we're gonna have Chris on, and Chris is gonna show us all sorts of other cool stuff, including that other um, IIFE, the immediately invoked function uh, expression that I used, I, th I think I tweeted about um, yesterday or the day before. Anyway, um, oops, have I not saved that? Uh, okay, good. Now, let's go out of here. We'll install JSON to CSV. We'll install it locally, npm install um, JSON to CSV. And while we're doing, in fact, ooh, Oh, let me just let me just kill Nodemon for a second. Um, npm list. Remember, in our episode one, our second episode, we played around a lot with npm, and we now understand what we can do with that. Um, we can see what modules, what packages have been installed um, locally here in this in this directory in this project. And we've got the Axios for the web requests. We've got Nodemon, of course, and we've got, which was a dev dependency, um, and we've got JSON to CSV. In fact, um, oops, bi package.json. Uh, we can see that now in the form of Axios and JSON to CSV being sort of normal dependencies, and there's the Nodemon uh, dev dependency. Okay, good. So we've got uh, JSON to CSV installed. Let's have a look at the documentation. Um, uh, JSON to CSV, there we go. And there's an example down here, uh, put that there. Example three, it was, wasn't it? There we go, yeah. Example three, I had a quick look at this before. Example three allows us to specify A, what fields we want from the JSON. So what properties in each of the maps in the array but it also allows us to present the list of fields that we want in the form of little maps here where we have a label property specifying the CSV column name, label, and the value property specifying the actual property in the JSON that we want. Okay, so in our case, um, we've got, actually let's use, use the, um, there we go, let's use the categories Let's put that there for a second. And let's have a look at our, um, where is it? North Breeze DB data model, model.data.cds. There we go. Um, let's move that down there for a second. We can see that, um, there we go. We can see that we need category ID from the JSON, but we want to call it ID, and we need category name from the JSON, but we want to call it name, and we want description from the JSON, and we want to call it description, and we don't want picture, okay? So that's what that was all about. Um, let's bring back the documentation. So that allows us to do this. So let's actually, I'll just move that across there um, so I can uh, reference that. We can start to, sort of, um, putting this in. Now, um, why don't we start by adding the, um, in fact, I could, I suppose, um, yeah, no, let's, let, let me just copy this in. Where are we? Uh, let's bring it across here. Yeah, um, here we go. Uh, JSON to CSV. 
in fact, let's get rid of that and uh, that. Let's put that there for, for a second. Okay, perfect. We all still see the screen. Yeah, that's good. Uh, in f oh, yeah, that'll, that'll do. Um, so why don't we say here, um, where are we? Uh, oh no, we said that already. Um, we'll have JSON to CSV equals, well, I'm gonna use this sort of convenience parse method. Uh, JSON to CSV equals require JSON to CSV dot parse. Let's have the new line there. Um, and then we want to somewhere in here, we don't, we don't want the length anymore. We also want, don't want to um, JSON stringify it. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Um, we want to somehow make this um, call here, JSON to CSV um, with the data and these options here. Now this is a really interesting um, JavaScript construct. Um, can anybody suggest what that might be? Um, stick it in the in the messages. Stick it in the chat here. Um, if you know what this construct is, it's from uh, ES6, and it's one of the sort of the. Well, I don't know whether it is syntactic. I guess, I guess it is syntactic sugar or syn syntactic sugar like a shortcut for doing something that would otherwise be a little bit more cumbersome. So, tell me what this is in the chat. Um, so where are we? We want to um, do something here, something like um, JSON to CSV to CSV. Uh, what does it look like here? Um, something. Well, it's going to be. Um, well, actually, we want to. We need to sort of supply that, don't we? So, um, and we can't. Ah, this is this is interesting. Um, there's a great video on um, YouTube called. Um, underscore doing it wrong. It's a fantastic video. I've watched it about four times. Um, this is it. Hey, underscore, you're doing it wrong. Um, it's a talk by um, Dr. Boolean, Brian Lonsdorf. I highly recommend it. I'll put it in the chat, the link in the chat. Um, Oh, arrived at home, blah, blah, blah. Try to follow the audio only. Excellent, okay. Well, thanks thanks for having us on your drive with you. Um, and have a nice evening. I hope you enjoy the replay. Have a great evening, Ronnie, and see you on Friday. Um, here's the link to the YouTube video. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, object destructuring. Um, yes, it's nothing new. Uh, generally, in JavaScript, it's new, but of course, it's existed in Erlang, yes, and I think in Clojure as well um, for many years. Um, so that's the link to this YouTube. The link in the chat is the link to this YouTube video. Um, super interesting. One of the things that it talks about a lot is the order of parameters in function signatures. And underscore has the order of parameters in such a way that it's sort of orthogonal to, or makes it difficult to, um, to, to, to write in a functional programming style. Now, the problem with this thing here is similar in that um, I, I would like to be able to pass um, the data to the JSON CSV call um, at the end, almost um, in the same way that we did the is and the categories and so on, like only categories. Um, this, this is, this is basically, I would like it to be a curried function so I could apply it partially with the options and then apply that partially applied call to the data as and when in the promise, but we can't do that with this particular thing here. So that's why we got to sort of use the, the slightly, slightly more pedestrian construct, which is, um, you know, to to specify the function definition sort of out loud here like this. So JSON to CSV, XS, and then we have our options, okay? Um, so that's what we want. So the options, it does, I suppose it, it, it makes sense because of course we're gonna be processing um, through this dot chain gauntlet each time for each of the entities. So why don't we put, oops, why don't we put the, um, Oh, with my, there we go. Uh, the the option, the parameters, the fields in each of these entity things here. So I'm, I'll do this here. I'll split this up. Um, there we go. Yeah. 
tokens, one fields, and then we'll have, uh, as, as you can see here on the left-hand side, we want an array, but down here in this example uh, here, example three, there we go, it's an array of maps. So we, we'll have here um, label um, ID, because that's what we want to have the C CSV column name to be. And then we want uh, we want to grab the, the value for that column from the category ID column, uh, sorry, property in the uh, JSON. And similarly for the, um, we want a name column for the category name property, a description, uh, description here there we go okay so that looks sort of like that over there and um, I think that looks okay I won't add it for the other products and suppliers I'll probably do that offline so we're not doing everything manually together uh, so between now and the next time we do this I'll, I'll do the same sort of thing I'll add the configuration for the products and for the suppliers so we can now grab the this field information um, in the call. So the options go as um, here, fields. What we'll specify here, though, is um, fields uh, because in the destructuring, by the way, the destructuring like this, this syntax only works if what you're trying to grab has the same name as the property here, fields, fields, colon, fields. But it isn't in this case, because we need to sort of dereference it from our uh, from our entities um, map. So uh, we'll say here, entities, uh, entity. So that's there, dot fields. That should be right, I think. Okay, I think that's what we want to do. Let's just um, minimize that. Um, let's have another one of those uh, things again. Let's keep that on that side for a change. Uh, we killed everything else, didn't we? So let's go to data and run, run the Python thing and um, node mom. There we go. Okay, so we're all back to normal. Uh, oh, actually, um, I think I will. Uh, oops. Put that there and I'm still I'm still getting to grips with this control key on the caps lock so um, bear with me um, what's going on oh well um, that'll do no nope. yeah that'll do okay so um, that's what I want that's what I want Finally, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so let's save that and see. Oh my God, that works straight away. That's amazing. Um, so what's that? What, what's happened there? What we're doing is we're. I'm genuinely surprised because um, my brain is really on twenty five percent or something at the moment. So um, what we're doing here is um, we're passing the data in the form of it, you know, and we're capturing it in excess. And this is the array of all the categories, the all eight, all eight categories. Then we're using the JSON to CSV package um, to convert that from JSON to CSV with these options. And these options specify when you get, uh, specify, in fact, let's just go up to there Let's remove that for a second. So we've only got ID and description. In fact, no, let's remove the description one. There we go. And so we only get the ID and the name. Um, so that's great. Uh, I suppose if we, um, let's just put this here, just call it X fields, for example, and we could, the simpler way of doing it, or rather, you know, the, the, the basic, uh, usage is going to be just a list of fields, right? So we can say, um, what's it called? Category, ID, and description. For example, that will still give us some some data, 
but it won't rename the fields in, you know, the, the column, the column fields. So that's why we have to use this sort of um, slightly more longhand, uh, slightly more involved collection of maps here in the fields. So that's good. So let's take that and write the CSV file. And in the last, what, 10 minutes, try and load that um, into a persistence layer in our North Breeze model. Shall we try that? Um, are we all still there, by the way? Where's my live dashboard? Uh, oh, yes, still got some viewers. Hello, hello, oh, amazing. Um, sorry, I'm going to be slightly delirious here. I'm going to have some water. Um, so in order to do that, of course, we've got to bring back in our um, file writing part of the dot chain. Um, I'm going to make this generic. I'm not going to call it C. I'm not going to move from JSON to CSV. Um, we are going to call it CSV. Oops, CSV. But I'm going to call it X's. All the X's. As a shout out to the inimitable Eric Meyer, of course. X over X's. So if we run that now, we don't want a console log. If we save that, um, it's started, it's finished. Um, let's have a look. In the data folder, we have categories.csv. Looks good. Okay, so why don't we take that and bring it into a CSV folder in our North Breeze project and try a CDS deploy. Okay, cool. So let's just um, open up a new window in Tmux. Oh, dear. Uh, go into the North Breeze directory, what we've got in here. Let's just remind ourselves, we've got a model CDS in DB, we've got the node modules, we've got the service.cds in there, and that's it. Okay, read me, what's in the read me? Oh yeah, okay, of course. Okay, cool. Um, so let's make dear DB CSV and um, copy grab data categories. Ooh, tell you what, what do we need to call it? Um, let's go into here North Breeze. Okay, so the convention. If you rem if we remember, if we remember, let's um, let's bring this over here. No .js, creative business service. This is the tutorial that we have been following. If you remember, I don't know, it's got an example somewhere of the CSV name to create. Where's the CSV stuff? Here we go, add initial data. My.bookshop dash authors. So this here is the namespace and a dash, and then this is the entity name with a capital, of course, you know, naming convention thing. So what we need to do is call it North Breeze dash categories with a capital C. Yeah, okay. Um, so copy data categories. So yeah, I'm still learning to use Ranger, uh, not very well, because I should be able to do all this within Ranger, but I'm still uh, still getting to grips with it. Uh, categories data, oh no, categories um, dot CSV to DB CSV North Breeze categories dot CSV. In fact, why don't we open that up in um, VS Code? And I'd open VS Code before, but what it said is da da da, there is a new version 1.1.1. .1 .1. Oops, hold on. Oh, there it is there. New version 1.1.1 .1 of the CDS language support extension. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Maybe that's a temporary message. Um, 1036. Let's just open it up again. Maybe it'll give us a message again. I'm still not sure how VS Code sort of decides whether I've seen a message or not. Um, download independence. Oh, no. Okay. Is it automatically downloaded? I've no idea. It's still at 1.0.36. That should at some stage, look for, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Has anybody else experienced that? Um, okay, we'll do that another time. Uh, of course, we can. I can uninstall the 1.0.36 and reinstall the new one, the 1.1.1, but we shouldn't have to do that. Why is VS Code not seeing that 
there is this 1.1.1 when earlier it did. Um, okay, fine. Let's not do that then. So we've got the North Breeze category CSV in here. And if you remember what we have to do is, well, we haven't got the SQL Lite 3 module. So let's install that as a dev dependency like we did last time. In fact, let's let's remind ourselves of why we did that. Um, SQL Lite 3. That was installing SQL Lite 3 as a dev dependency. And then we can use the SQL Lite driver effectively to, to, to create the persistence layer in the form of you know a .db file, SQL Lite DB file. So let's do that. Um, CDS deploy um, to SQLite, and let's just call it um, northbreeze.db in the project root folder. Let's see what happens. Okay, initializing from CSV files at .db .csv. This is not planned, by the way. Um, what is your keyboard? My keyboard is um, a Vortex Race 3. Um, let me just, where's my video? Let me just put my video on here. Um, so Vortex Race 3, uh, all with the original key caps that came with it. Um, I love it. I would highly recommend it. This one I ordered with um, MX Cherry, uh, Cherry MX Blue switches on, which are tactile and clicky. Pull up to the uh, uh, thing there. Oh, lovely. There are entire videos on YouTube with people demonstrating the sound of um, the, the key presses on, on switches on keyboards, and I watch them all the time. It's very odd, but very satisfying. Anyway, uh, so that's what my keyboard is. Uh, and welcome, by the way. Um, I, how do I pronounce your name? J. Louise. J. Louise, welcome. Um, so that's amazing. Has that worked? Well, let's have a look. Um, let's just put it over here so we can type a little bit easier, see it a little bit easier. Has that worked? We've got a North Breeze DB. So let's use my local macOS SQLite command line client. To have a look. Oh my goodness, it's worked. Right. Well, that's really the sort of thing that we want to do. Um, let me know in the comments whether um, you would prefer me to sort of finish this off in the background and do the same thing for the products and for the suppliers, or whether we should do this together and explore along the way a few more sort of um, interesting functional bits and pieces, maybe do a bit, bit more promisey stuff and so on. Because I think, um, one of the uh, things that I enjoy is uh, discovering um, that it's you know it's really easy actually to uh, oh thanks for following as well J Luis uh, or is it J Luis I'm not quite sure I've been doing some uh, Spanish uh, classes beginner Spanish classes anyway uh, that was random um, whether you want to continue with this or whether I should complete this. Give me a shout because um, if I can complete this in the background, then we can get on with the next part, which is to start, I guess, messing around with the uh, the relationships, the navigation properties, and how to sort of deal with those um, from a data loading perspective, and and you know get on with uh, doing stuff with the the O data that we 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 um, the O data service that we can have generated for us. So anyway, that's the end of the hour. Um, I can't believe that's gone really quickly, but I, 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 we we got as far as I wanted to get, which was to get some CSV-based data into the persistence layer in the SQLite database in the um, CAP model. Um, yeah, again, if you don't get a chance to let me know in the in the comments here, in the chat rather, it's not the comments, in the chat uh, here, whether you want me to do this in the background so we've got it all complete for next time or whether you want to do it with me, let me know on um, Twitter. So until uh, next time, which is this coming Friday, the and it looks at like his calendar on the wall. Fr where are we? Friday the 8th 
of March at the usual Friday time, which is my morning, eight o'clock. Um, I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the day and Thursday, and I'll see you with Chris to do some functional stuff uh, with Cap on Friday. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.